This is Minute Maid Pomegranate Blueberry Juice. Contrary to popular opinion, it doesn't actually contain all that much pomegranate or uh, blueberry. Actually, it's about 99% apple and grape juice and a solid 0.5% of the namesake thrown in for good measure. This was brought up in court by a juice-based competitor, Pom Wonderful, who appears to have a bit of investment in the state of the pomegranate industry. They claim that they lost nearly $80 million because this Coca-Cola-owned juice subsidiary was selling a competing product at a low price without actually being pomegranate blueberry juice. Well, Coke won the case. Not because in reality this is pomegranate blueberry juice, but because if you look at the ingredients on the back, they are listed from most contained to least contained. Basically, it follows the FDA labeling, and they just didn't want to deal with this shit. Regardless, I think we can all agree that this is false advertising. The act of marketing a product in a misleading way, or flat out lying about what you get. As long as man has ventured into adventures of capitalism, there has been those trying to pull a fast one on us. Before the the 20th century, virtually no precedent existed for dealing with this sort of behavior. And as such, we saw the birth of the snake oil salesman. A guy would go into town, promote some concoction he claimed could cure all ailments from dysentery to super AIDS. And before anybody could catch on, he'd hit the road and play more suckers like a fiddle in the next town. Snake oil was the primary ingredient listed in these mixtures. It's, uh, snakes were magical back in the 1800s. But don't worry, almost no snake oil actually contained snakes, since I assume that these snakes ran really fast. As the salesman regaled the gathering public of his whimsical medicine, he would plant an associate in the crowd, who would come up and prove that the medicine works. No funny business here, buddy. This was the shill. As consumerism boomed and the new century loomed, people became a bit more wary of what they were actually buying. The jungle exposed the meat industry for potentially selling human parts, while the Jungle Book enthralled us with the bear of smarts. And as we've seen since, regulations have become more standard, and nowadays it's a little bit harder to get away with these, uh, practices. We've seen supplements that claim to stop the cold and the flu, and Volkswagen finding out that it ain't easy being greensy. Kellogg's claims cereal makes you immortal and stops you from masturbating. But this isn't a video that lists all the false ad falsenesses, but instead I kind of just wanted to talk about a specific market that the law has not caught up with in this uh, advertising game. That would be computer technology. Yeah, misleading ads in this market is a day-to-day -day thing, and they can get away with it too, because, well, lawmakers don't know too much about the stuff. What's a RAM? How can JPEG? And since both the governing bodies and the mass public aren't too informed on technical details, you get a lot of iffy advertising tactics. One such is the all-too-common buzzword. You've seen this many a time, I'm sure. The This phone camera has 50 megapixels, so it has to be better than that lousy 12, right? Wrong! See, it's a bit more nuanced than that. You got sensors and AI and other shit that you can't convey in a simple ad. So this picture might look better than this picture, but but this phone got a bigger number. Same thing with the teraflop, a term that sees a lot of use today compared to back in the time when they didn't say teraflop. It describes peak graphical performance. So uh, if this is a six teraflop GPU, it must be as good as this six teraflop GPU, right? Again, no. Companies use different architectures and optimizations. So the only thing you can go off of is real world performance. Probably a more common one you've encountered is resolution. Marketing a TV as a basic 4K, 8K, OK TV. Sure, it tells you how many little dots you might get, but less people are concerned about the nits, which is the brightness level, the contrast, whether it's OLED, the refresh rate, latency, viewing angles. And that's why a 4K TV could cost either 200 bucks or 2000 Because Mr. Man over there going into Walmart on clearance date doesn't know that this thing's a piece of shit. It gets more confusing when you combine the resolution and the video games. Will the next Xbox have 8K? No. No. 
No. Cards that are out right now for way more than this thing will cost, that are way more powerful than this thing is, cannot run it. At least for big games. Maybe Feeding Frenzy will work on it. And that gives us the biggest issue of false advertising here. The public just doesn't know any better. At the end of the day, it is up to the consumer and the shareholder to just know what they're getting into. Expect marketing to try to sell you on a product. That's how it works. But as bad as all this might be, it's nothing compared to the pomegranate blueberry juice. This is Tyler of Knowledge Hub.